And Iran's supreme leader is calling for five days of mourning after confirming the deaths of President Raisi and the country's foreign minister. Iranian state TV says the two leaders and other Iranian officials were killed when their helicopter crashed on Sunday. Now a former foreign minister is partially blaming the crash on American sanctions. Foreign correspondent Britt Clement joins me now from Israel for more on this. Uh, Britt, what's the latest on how this crash happened? Yeah, Diane, so the exact cause of the helicopter crash, it, it remains unclear. What we do know is that the helicopter was one of three traveling in a convoy and that it crashed in heavy fog and in cold conditions in this part of the country that's very mountainous uh, and the conditions were extremely treacherous. And now the helicopter was also carrying the governor of the East Azerbaijan province along with other officials and bodyguards. That's according to Iran's state-run news agency. Uh, they were heading to the city of Tabriz. That's in the northwest of Iran after returning from a dam opening ceremony uh, on the Azerbaijan border. Now, Iranian authorities say that, in fact, one victim, uh, an imam, survived for an hour and, and tried to raise help. That Now, the search lasted for more than 12 hours. It involved other countries, including Turkey. The Iranian Red Crescent said that the bodies of all the victims were then recovered from the crash site. So how significant are these deaths to Iran and to the world? Yeah, so uh, President Raisi, he was a hardline cleric. He was close to Iran's supreme leader, and he was one of the main contenders, actually, to replace him. Now, the president's interior minister, uh, it, ministry rather, runs the national police force, but it's actually the commander uh, is appointed and answerable uh, to the supreme leader. So the Iranian government has held its first cabinet meeting following the death of Raisi at Iran's newly appointed uh, interim president, Mohammad Makba. Uh, he said that Iran's policies will continue as usual. So this doesn't seem like, you know, in 2020, the assassination of the leader of Revolutionary Guard. Uh, at that point, Iran's he was Iran's leading figure who helped reshape the region. It doesn't seem like this will have that kind of effect yet, Diane. Uh, now, Britt, given the turmoil in the Middle East, is there any suspicion of foul play here? Yeah, look, at this moment, we haven't seen a lot of speculation. It doesn't mean we won't see some finger pointing at this point. But, you know, it does indicate uh, that, you know, this is a heightened region. It has been on tender hooks for some time. I was here uh, in April when we saw Iran launch that first direct attack on Israeli soil. So certainly, you know, this is a region on edge. And that doesn't mean that any kind of miscalculation or any misunderstanding uh, could uh, spiral out of control. But at this point, it does seem uh, Kind of contained. Now, the president and the foreign minister were key supporters of Iran backed groups like Hamas, the Houthis, and Hezbollah. So, what does this mean for those groups? Yeah, so Hezbollah, Iran's main ally in Lebanon, uh, have uh, issued condolences, but the track of Iran's support uh, will not be disrupted. They made that very clear. President Raisi was close to the Iran's supreme leader, as I've just said. He designs and approves regional politics. So the interim president, Mohammed Makba, he, he comes from the same school of hardliners in support of the resistance. So the course of regional policies is expected to remain more or less the same, Diane. Foreign correspondent Britt Clenet in Israel. Thank you, Britt.